Hey, this is Man Made Mead. Today we are bottling some mead. I want to show you guys how to do it and what to do uh, when it's this time. Now, I have a 750 milliliter bottle here. This is a regular wine bottle size. Half that, 375 milliliters. Um, 187 milliliters, this is like sampler, about like a, a, almost like a beer bottle, a little more, of course, and then a wine bottle size. Here's my mead I'm gonna be pulling uh, these into. The good news is, and what I'm going to use today, I'll go and tell you right now, are synthetic corks. These synthetic corks are great um, because you uh, you don't necessarily have to prepare them to get into the uh, to go into the bottle, and they fit in all three uh, of these bottles. So I don't have to do a lot of changing. So I'll be using synthetic corks, and I'll also talk about using regular corks. I have my um, my floor corker, which I'm going to use and show you how to use, and I also have my hand corker. So let's get started. Uh, first things first, we're going to fill up the uh, regular wine bottle size. Okay, so the first thing you're going to need when you move over a mead into a bottle um, is a, a wand or a uh, bottling wand as they call it. Now this bottling wand has a little bitty plastic tip here at the end. When you press this, it allows the liquid to come out. So this connects to just your normal auto siphon. And so whenever you are siphoning out, press on the bottom of the mead bottle, or excuse me, of the wine bottle, and it will automatically fill. When it's getting to the top, you want to stop, you release, and it's there. It's perfect for what uh, I'm doing right now. So I'm going to be moving over, this is my apple cinnamon mead. I want to do a bigger bottle of it. Um, so I'm going to get started with, with this one. It's pretty easy. This is the easy process. If you normally rack your meads, this is not hard at all. Um, what I'm going to do is go ahead and stick this guy in here. Cut it out of the way. And then just start siphoning. Now I want to put pressure on this so that the siphon will start to work. Now I'm not doing this lower like I can, but as you can tell right now, this is filling up. The bottle is starting to fill up, and I'm going to fill it up till about hmm, the. You have to gauge where your cork is at ultimately. So. As I'm going, I'll show you in a second what I'm going to do. I'm going to take a cork and then see exactly kind of where I want to stop with this. All right, I'm getting close to the top. I'm going to stop fairly soon. I'm going to stop about here. Just a little more. Okay, so I'm going to stop here. Because when I take this out, I'm not actually going to go up a little more. Because when I take out my wand, it's going to actually uh, go down a little bit. Even a little more. Now it looks like I'm putting almost too much in there. I'm really okay for the moment. Just a little bit more. Ooh, there we go. Okay, so you don't want to fill it all the way to the top. Uh, because you want to leave just a little bit of room. Now, when I'm talking a little room, I'm only talking maybe half an inch at the top because, one, you have to have room for your cork. That's part of the thing. So, assuming this goes all the way in, my cork is going to fit down till about there, leaving me with about an inch at the bottom. Sorry, better camera view. Inch at the bottom. So, um, I want to be sure and do that. Now, quick thing. When you are putting a cork in, I'm using, like I said, synthetic corks. These are kind of like a fake cork, um, and they don't require any real prep. Um, when you're using a real cork, you need to, of course, get the right number cork, eight, nine, whatever you're using for the size. You have to, or most people will steam them in some way for about 15 to 20 minutes, depending on how long it needs to go, um, just to where the cork gets a little bit pliable. That way, when they start to put it down into here, it goes in real easily and nicely, so you don't have to work super hard. Um, so you steam them. Some people just put them in water, let them soak for a few minutes, but you don't want to do it too long. If you do it too long, the uh, cork will deteriorate over time as you're aging for a long time, or if you don't do it long enough, it just won't go in all the way. So it's kind of like a fine art. That's why I like the synthetics. Synthetics are real simple. There's only one thing I have to do, and that is 
uh, uh, what I want to do is I'm going to take and just put this in my sanitizing water so that it will go into the uh, bottle a little easier. Okay, so all I've done is taken and dumped this into my sanitizing water uh, just real quick. Puts a little bit of water on it so it might slide down easier. Now, I'm not going to use this hand corker just yet. Um, I'll show you in a second why I don't like using the hand corker as much. This thing works well, but there's one little flaw with it. So instead, we're going to use the floor corker. Okay, now, the great thing about the floor corker is it's really easy to use. It's super simple. All you, do, all you have to do is place your cork into here, and when you place the cork in here, I'll show you real fast what this does. The floor corker is really cool in that this will squeeze the cork as I bring this down. It will squeeze it to where it will get smaller and go into the actual bottle easier. So I like that about that, and it pushes down, and it's got this lever. This will, uh, as this goes down, the actual lever on it will stop to where you're not pushing down against a spring. Okay, so I've put in my uh, actual uh, cork, and so I'm going to lower this down until I put it right where it needs to be, in the center. And, simple enough, all I'm going to do to cork this with this nice floor corker is take, push this down, it squeezes the cork, I'm going to hold the bottle and make sure it doesn't, nothing goes wrong, and push. And this will put that cork right into the mead bottle, nice and smooth. And then, voila, I'm done. I have bottled this mead and it leaves a nice, it's not too bad of a little indention at the top. It is ready to sit. Um, now there's one more step I can take. Let me show you real fast. Last thing you can do is I'm going to go ahead and label this. I bought some, these are uh, uh, just a blank label page, and these labels actually will wash off of the water really easily, so I can reuse the, um, the, the bottles easier. So I'm just going to take and put this on here, and put it about there. Now I know what it is, and my little system for labeling is going to be the mead itself, which is the apple cinnamon mead. This 9-2... Um, I need to put 18 or 17 real fast. 17 uh, is when it was started. 5, 10, 18 is when I bottled it. Okay, so I bottled. This is the wine bottle one, like I said. Um, now I'm going to actually do another one with the, uh, the apple cinnamon, and I'll show you the hand corker and why I don't prefer it. Okay, we're actually going to fill up a sampler size one, 187 milliliters. Um, now, the same process, put the meat in, and then we'll cork it. Okay, so like I said, I've left a little room for the uh, cork. So the cork is going to take up about that much, leaving us with maybe about an inch at the bottom. Now, I'm actually going to re-cork this one. I'm going to waste a cork for this reason. You'll see why. I'm going to use the hand corker on this guy. And it's not that the bottle is too small, because this right here, this works. And I'll show you after I'll use my the uh, actual floor corker, and it will work better. This, uh, <laughs> the hand corker is just not great. So here's the hand corker. What you do with the hand corker is you load your cork into this little spot right here. And there's one little uh, flaw with the hand corker. If you look at this guy, this doesn't press firmly down on the cork right here. It doesn't press square on it. And so it will leave a weird kind of indention um, as the cork goes through this little area. So I'll show you what happens with the hand corker. The hand corker you just put on top and then you, uh, let me show you. So hand corker you put on top, you can squeeze the sides, and it will start to push this cork down. That's a little harder to do. Part of the problem with this. <clears throat> so, now I push it all the way down, as far as it can go. Oh. 
And then you kind of have to, when you're taking it off, this little metal piece at the top is kind of affixed to the cork. So you have to wiggle its way out. That's why I don't prefer that hand corker. Okay, so we're gonna pull up. Now here's the problem, I can already see it. This is what the hand corker left. This cork should realistically go down further, but because of the pressure put on this cork, because of the hand corker going sideways, it left this really weird indention. So um, let me take this out and I'll do it with the floor corker and it will hopefully work better. Okay, so I have uh, removed that cork. I'm gonna get another one. I'm gonna make sure and put my uh, dump it in sanitizer. And now we're gonna do it on the floor corker and you'll see that it'll work better. So this thing isn't really made, the floor corker isn't exactly made to easily suit at the beginning um, smaller bottles. So what I'm doing right here is uh, actually using this little block and this block will help me put this up to here where it needs to be to sit. So I have, uh, have everything I need, got my cork, and now uh, just thinking about that same process, watching as the, uh, the cork will get kind of squished down and pushed in. So, okay, so we're gonna push this in. There we go. Now, ah, I can already tell there's a big difference here. Here is where this one did. It looks now, um, so this is that 187. If you look at this as opposed to the actual hand corker, this is way smoother, way nicer. This hand corker is about 68 or nine dollars, and then the hand corker is like 30. You know, if you have the time or you have the money, really, uh, and you can buy this, this thing is way better for corking. It makes it look nicer. So we have one last one to do. I'm gonna go ahead and label this one as well. All right, last one. This is a um, 375 milliliter. And I have a friend who's moving and I'm not gonna get to see him again for a long time, so I'm gonna give him some mead. Uh, kind of as a present, going away present. So, this is, uh, he wanted some of my traditional, one of my traditional meads. I have three different ones going right now. This one has clover honey. So I think that this one will be the one uh, that'll be pretty good to try. So first things first, um, I want to of course get this into here. I'm going to go ahead and move it over with my siphoning hose. And with the uh, bottling wand, you want to put a little pressure. And you want to push down a little bit so that the pressure will start to go through and it will actually siphon some mead. So we're going to get some going. Now this bottle is a little weird to hit, to push, because it's got a bunch of slants on the bottom. So. I gotta do it just right. Okay, so we have our our mead bottle. Same process, cork it using the floor corker, of course. Reminder if you're using regular corks, you have to uh, treat them by actually going through and uh, and Heat and uh, hydrating them some some bit. So I think this one will work without me doing anything, but we're gonna find out. So uh, this is that 375. Pull down. Push. And voila! A very well corked mead. Now we label this one. Let me show you guys one quick trick if you don't want to actually bottle these things with corks and cork them, um, you can do this. Now if you don't want to deal with any corking, uh, this is not a long, long, long term solution for years and years, but these are swing top uh, bottles and these will do fine to hold your mead for, um, I've seen people do it for a couple 
years, maybe one or two years, but like if you're thinking to age your meat for four to uh, five years, long time, I would do a different route. But I'm gonna go ahead and do a swing top one. This is easier, no corking involved. Okay, like I said, this is an easy, quick solution. These swing top caps uh, work very well for beer and for mead and everything. So now this is done and there's no corking involved. Okay, so I hope this has helped you. Um, I have uh, these bottles all bottled and ready and corking. So corking is the one of the weirdest things with mead. It's a kind of a cool process. You get to finalize your product, but whenever these are done, I mean, it looks great. Just seeing your product in the end is really nice and cool. If you have the money, I would absolutely buy the floor corker. It works really well. Um, it's hard to beat, and the hand corker works great. The problem with it is, it just doesn't, it doesn't push down all the way, it doesn't center, and so you get kind of a sideways, uh, sideways cork, which I don't really like. So, I hope this has helped in general, and if you have any questions, um, remember, synthetic corks, I like them the best because you don't have to prep them. If you use regular corks, you need to steam them for 15-20 uh, minutes, depending on what they are. Um, and then put them in. Don't let them go for too long. They'll deteriorate over time. When you store your meat, last thing, I forgot to say it's super important. If you're using a real cork, you need to lay the meat or the wine on the side for when you store it so that it will hydrate the cork and the cork will stay, uh, will be fine for a long time. If you don't do that, the cork will dry out and then um, realistically, you, there's problems of the cork's just not going to do its job and things could happen. Um, so the synthetic though, you don't have to do that because they don't rely on the hydrating things. So that's also why I like synthetic corks. Easier, one size fits all, it's just nice. So um, thanks for watching. If you have any questions, let me know. If you like this video, leave a like, leave a comment, um, share it, whatever. Um, I appreciate everything you guys have to say. I am excited to keep doing mead. So, uh, see you guys next time with some new mead adventures. Cheers.